Hello and welcome to Access Sportsnet Lakers. I'm Chris McGee, joined by Big Game, James Worthy, Robert Ori, and Mike Bresnahan. Mike Trudell is out in Palm Springs handling the post-game interviews. Preseason game number one in the books. Lakers fall to the Timberwolves in the desert. Uh, as far as preseason games go, this one was pretty entertaining. Uh, I thought it was a fun game. I thought the Lakers uh, had a lot of bright spots, some positive spots as well as they fell to the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. Also competed really hard, James. I like that. No matter who yeah, was in I mean, there. It's, I mean, look, it's uh, it's first preseason. game. Uh, the coach uh, has a lot to look at. Mm -hmm. Still a lot of scenarios to to see. And that's what, that's what preseason games are all about. Uh, you you want to see if players are able to follow instructions, uh, kind of see how, how the, the mood goes with the team, if they're able to uh, orchestrate run plays. You, you know, you're looking for certain things, but, uh, you know, it's a preseason game, not to expect too much, but it was a hard-fought game, and the guys that were on the floor played hard. Yeah, preseason game, the first game for a lot of guys is, to, you know, knock off the rust, get the nerves out, and then see how you adapt to situations uh, that you're not familiar with. You know, think about it. You know what the play is when you're in practice, but if you don't know what other teams play, mm -hmm. can you adjust, maybe? can you communicate to your other teammates? And I saw a lot of that. When you talk about the switching, which everybody does now, there was a lot of communication on the switching part, which was good, and that lets you know that the team likes one another and they know how to talk on defense. It's pretty exciting to see some of the guys either we haven't seen in a while, like, like a Max Christie, a Gabe Vincent, Jalen Huchafino, and, of course, the new guys, you know, Dalton Connect and Bronny. And, and I think uh, I, I would say Max Christie stood out the most to me. I mean, he didn't shoot the three well, one for six there. Everything else he did, he looked really comfortable. You know, th this is a kid who the Lakers liked him. Remember, they gave him that four-year uh, contract, and uh, they want him around. Now we see why. Yeah, I kind of want to read it where you said, Brez, I, I, I was really happy to see Gabe Vincent healthy and playing yeah, basketball yeah. again. I, I'm going to get to Dalton Connect in a little bit because I'm really excited about him. But I, I do want to start with Max Christie, so I'm glad you led us there. Uh, as Brad said, like, listen, this is a guy that the Lakers talked a lot about this summer. They gave him the contract. Um, he kind of did it all in this game, a true two-way player. You saw what he could do on the defense end, that length, um, his ability to come from behind and block, his ability to get in front of guys on the perimeter. Um, also 11 points, seven rebounds, a couple of blocks, steal, a couple of assists, Rob. Loved what I saw from him. Yeah, the thing about Max Chris, we've all seen that he had the athleticism. Mm -hmm. We've seen that he had the NBA body, but we want to see him put it together. And he hasn't quite put it together. And I don't know if it's because he hadn't had the minutes or because he hadn't matured, you know, for the NBA game yet. But tonight, even though they didn't have, you know, the starters, out there, he looked comfortable. It looks like he's saying, you know what, I'm going to be that sixth man off the bench, and I want to show you that I deserve to be here, and I'm going to get these minutes. I remember when he was a rookie. Remember, James, he's only 22 years old, coming huh. into his third year. I remember when he was a rookie. You didn't get to see him much, but you knew he was putting on a lot of weight in the weight room, and he was getting better, mm -hmm. and people were talking about him. Last year, we saw signs of a guy that was taking a jump from year one to two. He just couldn't get into the rotation. Some nights because of injuries, and he would do his job, and he would play well. He's only 21. Sorry. So uh, this year, the expectations are that he is going to be a guy that impacts this team. Uh, and J.J. talks about it, guys that are winning players. Uh, Max Christie seems to fit that bill. One thing he had when he came here is he had a plan, and he was very patient with it. You know, under 21, couldn't get a drink when the guys went out for, <laughs> for dinner. You know, you know we, talk, we, we, we teased him about that. But he had a plan. And, you know, he kept improving. And I think, Geeter, uh, he's at a point now where he's ready to show what he can do. And, and when, when you hear a player says, all I want to do is make a difference on the defensive end, his offense comes automatically. He's a really good offensive player. He can get to the cup. That two-handed dunk, he can play bigger than what he really is. He's strong. So it's going to be a big up uptake for him. Uh, it's going to see how uh, Coach Reddick utilizes him because he's, he's knocking at the door for playing time. He, he is, and, and Brez, he understands the business of the NBA. You know, when he sat with us media day, we asked him about the contract he got. I mean, he never had this kind of money in his life, right? He's going to make $8 million a year for four years, $32 million. But he's also really young. This is not his last contract. And we asked him if it was motivating him to prove that the Lakers were right in offering him this. Yeah, it motivated him more than ever because he wants to show that their belief in him is warranted. I believe as Rob Palenka mentioned this at his uh, press conference about a week and a half ago, players who sign big deals and, and when they're young, it goes one of two ways. Either they're like excited and they want to prove the, their worth or some guys, not, not a lot, not all certainly, some guys are like, yeah, I made it big. I'm going go to I'm gonna go to Cabo for a few weeks. Mm. I'm going to go around Europe with, uh, with my family for, for a month and, 
you know, that first season is not good for them mm -hmm. off, off the, uh, the new contract extension. Obviously, Max Christie did not go to Europe for a month with our friend Brad Turner. <laughs> he, he instead was very much in that gym a lot during the offseason. Strength training, shooting. It's a little hard to practice defense during the offseason. Um, but I really heard good things about him. And, and for Rob to say, you know, obviously he is not going the wrong way with this new money. He is definitely uh, playing really hard at a very early part of the season, Keith. All right, let's get to my rookie, Dalton Connect. Uh, very excited with what I saw from Dalton. 16.7 to 13. Uh, Rob broke him down, James, before the game, just that offense when he was at Tennessee and what we saw in the summer league. He's, he's, he's got a bag, and, and he, he's not afraid of the moment. And boy, can he shoot. When you say he's in the 1% of shooters from three, that's huge. And he does it with ease. He's not forcing it. Catch and shoot, great form. But here's what I do like about him. He can catch, pump fake, relocate, get to the rack. He knows when he's being overplayed. He knows when to go back door. Had a couple of nice plays like that tonight. High IQ for the game. He's anxious. I think he just wants to play a little older than most rookies, uh, ready to prove. I think big upside, if he gets in the game with LeBron and AD and the way they double and the way LeBron gets downhill and draws the defense to collapse, He's going to be out there knocking down some, some threes for sure. Rob, it's kind of fun to see the athleticism as well. Combo that with how smooth he is technically with the ball in his hands and able to, what James said, do all those different things. It's, uh, you know, when you put that together, he, he can be a player. I think one of the things that you got to understand, the, the conference that you come from, you know, SEC is one of those conferences where it's physical. Yeah. It's a physical like you get in the NBA. So he's NBA ready. So he knows how to control his body. He knows how to get to the rack. He knows what to do to get his shot off. And one of the things that I like to look at a lot of rookies when they, when they play, how are they going to handle the moment? Each shot that he took, his form was his form. It wasn't off balance. It was nothing that was out of his nature. And for me, when you look at that, that lets you know he's ready because you look at a lot of those guys tonight, they took shots, they shot air balls, yeah. you know, they shot with their feet spread out, things that are fundamentally sound. And this guy is fundamentally ready. And that's one of the things that you got to understand about these guys when they come to league. If they're fundamentally ready, no matter how athletic they are or how old they are, if they're fundamentally ready, just, they can play this game. This, this form kind of reminds me of somebody that I know. Huh? Red? <laughs> you got, you got Big a, shot? Yeah. <laughs> you, got a, uh, you loved him early in the college season last year. Mm -hmm. You were talking about him, and then you were so excited when, the, when he started slipping. Yeah. 17. Yeah, because I, I think sometimes people can look at, if you, if you walk, this is like, uh, don't take this wrong. When you walk in the gym, it's like, it's like white men can't jump. You look at this guy, you're like, he's kind of scrawny. He, he's a country boy. You don't really know much about him, but the boy can fight. The highly anticipated moment arrived on Friday evening as Bronny James made his NBA preseason debut with the Los Angeles Lakers. The game, played against the Minnesota Timberwolves in California, had all eyes on Bronny, who stepped onto the court for the first time as a Laker. While his stat line wasn't overwhelming, Bronny still made history and showed flashes of his potential on both ends of the floor. He finished the game with two points, one rebound, one assist, and three blocks in 16 minutes of action, shooting one-sixth from the field. Though he struggled offensively, his defense was the highlight of the night. Bronny's preseason debut, two points, one-sixth shooting, three blocks, one assist, one rebound, one turnover, 16 minutes of play. Despite not scoring much, Bronny's three blocks were significant, according to Stat Mamba. Ronnie James had three blocks tonight. The only guard to record more blocks in their preseason debut was Dwayne Wade, 2003. This remarkable stat puts Bronny in elite company and shows his defensive instincts at such an early stage in his career. One of Bronny's best sequences came when he blocked a shot on defense and quickly transitioned to set up Rui Hachimura for a three-pointer. This play had fans buzzing as it showcased his ability to impact the game on both ends of the court. The NBA's official social media account highlighted the moment. Bronny James doing it on both ends. The block leads to the assist to Rui for three. Kai, Lakers fans and basketball enthusiasts alike are eagerly awaiting the moment when Bronny can share the floor with his father, LeBron James. For Friday's game, both LeBron and Anthony Davis were ruled out, giving Bronny more time to shine. 
The Lakers will be back in action on Sunday evening when they face Kevin Durant and, and the Phoenix Suns. Fans will have another opportunity to see Bronny in action as the Lakers continue to fine-tune their roster during the preseason. After wrapping up their six preseason games, the Lakers will open their regular season on October 22nd against the Timberwolves at home in Los Angeles. Coming off a tough playoff exit last season to the Denver Nuggets, this season is set to be a crucial one for the Lakers as they look to return to championship form. What did you think of Bronny's preseason debut? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more Lakers news and updates from Lakers News Squad. What's up, Lakers Nation? Today we've got a hot story straight from the 2024 NBA Draft with some behind-the-scenes drama that shows just how far LeBron's influence extends. According to ESPN's Ramona Shelburne, the Golden State Warriors had Bronny James, LeBron's son, on their draft board. They could have selected him with the 52nd pick, but decided to pass out of respect for LeBron's desire to see his son play alongside him with the Lakers. In the end, the Lakers took Bronny with the 55th overall pick, setting the stage for something truly historic. LeBron and Bronny are set to become the first father-son duo to play together in NBA history. It's a moment that all basketball fans have been eagerly waiting for Bronny's journey so far. Bronny, just 19 years old, played one season at USC, but it was anything but smooth sailing. He had to undergo a heart procedure after suffering cardiac arrest during a workout, which caused him to miss USC's first eight games. Despite his effort to make a comeback, he struggled to find his rhythm averaging 4.8 points, 2.8 rebounds, and 2.1 assists per game. While many thought Bronny could have worked his way into first-round consideration, his challenges at USC left questions about whether he'd even enter the draft. But after impressing during pre-draft shooting drills, he secured his place in the second round. And with LeBron making it clear on multiple occasions that he wanted to play with his son, the Lakers were always the favorite to draft Bronny. The role of Rich. Paul in the draft, one of the key behind-the-scenes moves came from LeBron's agent, Rich Paul. Reports surfaced that Paul was actively telling teams not to draft Bronny, warning them that if they did, Bronny would head to Australia to play instead of joining the NBA. This was all part of ensuring Bronny would fall to the Lakers. What if LeBron joined the Warriors? Now imagine for a moment if the Warriors hadn't listened to Paul and drafted Bronny. At the time, LeBron hadn't yet renewed his contract with the Lakers, meaning he could have technically tested free agency. Would the chance to play with Stephen Curry and Bronny have been enough to tempt LeBron to leave the Lakers for the Warriors? It's a crazy thought. Former Warriors GM Bob Myers also revealed that Golden State tried to acquire LeBron before the trade deadline, but the Lakers turned down the offer. This just shows how much respect the Warriors have for LeBron, putting his wishes and loyalty to the Lakers above their own desire to add another star. What does this mean for the Lakers? Now that Bronny is officially a Laker, we have the chance to witness something truly historic on the court. Whether Bronny spends most of his rookie year in the G League or not, the prospect of him sharing the floor with LeBron is enough to shake up the entire basketball world. So, Lakers fans, what do you think about this uh, entire situation? How excited are you to see LeBron and Bronny together in purple and gold? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more updates on your favorite team. Thank you for tuning in to Lakers News Squad. Be sure to subscribe and stay with us as we continue to bring you the latest news, analysis, and insights on your favorite team. Go Lakers!